That scoring drive, nine plays, taking up 425 off the clock, going 78 yards. So a good drive for Harvard, a culminating good. in their field goal. They would have loved to add a touchdown on that, but they came away with some points, and that's important to them. Now they've got to get a turnover. They've got to get the ball back soon and get a shot at another score to hang in this ballgame. Moretz will tee it up just to the left of the right hash mark. Deep for Pennsylvania, Chris Flynn and Jim Bruni standing on about the nine-yard line. Bruni will handle it at the 19. 30 and pulls his way to the 34. Jim Crochicchia coming back into the ball game as the Penn crowd is really into this football game today. Having a lot of fun. Big weekend. They've had a lot of fun for a lot of weekends. That's right. They're 8 0 and looking at 9 0. Prochickia, the quarterback, Pennsylvania staying in a two tight end setup. Now Scungio flexes. Get up. Get up. Prochickia looking to throw. Looking for Andrews. Intercepted by Everly at the 40, the 30, the 20, and Camisio runs him out of bounds at the 20. And this was a great read by Heberly, who's played just tremendously today. He's had a great day playing as, and you'll see how he comes up and times this perfectly on the wide receiver, and he makes his play on the flight of the football. That's right. His second interception puts Harvard in good position at the 15 yard, excuse me, at the 20 yard line. Pennsylvania, 23 yard return for Don Eberly. And his fourth interception this year. Don Eberly, a junior from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. Going on a quick count, Sabaro, and tripped up. Sebastian Ellie, he gets about two down to the 18. So Harvard looking to take advantage of the turnover. It's a very dangerous pass, the hitch pass, but he didn't throw it at the line of scrimmage. He threw it about eight yards down the field. I think he looked his receiver all the way, too, and that's dangerous because, believe it or not, people do read quarterback's eyes, and he looked at his receiver right from the beginning. There's no question about re reading the uh, quarterback's eyes, uh, particularly if, if from a wide shot looking at the films, you can do that type of thing. Second down and seven. Yoey looking to throw back to O'Neal in the end zone. He's got him, but... Broken up by Don Wilson, the corner of the end zone. Not much room there. Fine play by Don Wilson, the senior cornerback for Penn, who came over late and made the play on the football as they tried to slip the halfback behind the receiver as we see a throwback. As Yoey will get more experience, he's got to get a little more on it. He's got to get it over that linebacker, but he's got to get it there a little quicker because the, the time that Wilson has to recover 21 enables Wilson. them to break it up. Right. So now third down and seven at the Pennsylvania 17. And once again, Harvard with four receivers to the wide side. Picks up the blitz underneath to Mike Madden, throws behind him and incomplete at the 15. And a great call. What they tried to do that time is put four receivers to one side. Madden, number 22, the widest receiver, comes underneath. Man coverage here. And Yoey just can't get him the ball. He throws it behind him. There it is. He's wide open. And he can get up the field, either get the first down for sure, maybe even get a touchdown. That's a very tough pass to throw when you're rolling right and the guy's going back left. You almost have to throw it further than you think you are. So uh, Harvard now faces a fourth down and seven, and they're going to go for it at the 18. Once again, four receivers. The pump, and he's got Sabar in the end zone. And Joey's on the ground, but Sabaro's in the end zone with six points for Harvard. You got to see this one to believe it because he was covered, and the sophomore had to put the ball right there, and Sabaro had to concentrate on the football. He comes from the wide side, and he comes across the middle, and there it is. Great concentration that's, by the receiver. That's the old distraction drill by the defensive back. Great concentration by Sabaro. And he kept his feet in bounds. 
very exciting play. Harvard's right back in this football Brett's game. will try to put number, point number 10 on the board, and he does. So Harvard now with a quick score off the interception by Don Everly. Trails Pennsylvania 17 to 10. 9.26 left to go in the game. And it's awfully quiet for a moment here. This big crowd is uh, sort of silenced for a moment with that scoring drive. Again, Harvard is, is employing a no-back backfield. They got four receivers to the left side, and they can do a bunch of things with those receivers. Here they take 40, so Barrow from the inside position, run him right across the middle, and he gets behind the safety man, keeps well, his feet in bounds, and makes a great catch. What happens, Wilson came over from, his, from the other side of the field because he was covering the tight end of the other side. But with four receivers, they can't go man-to-man. -man. They don't have enough people. They're playing zone. So they just outnumbered. Wilson didn't get over in time, and Sabara got behind the linebacker. There's number 40, George Sabara, the history major out of Naples, Florida, the senior. Came into this game with four TDs, three running, one through the pass. That's his second touchdown that he scored via the pass. A four-play drive, 52 seconds. Huddled on the sideline, Ed Subro's got his team right there. He's talking to the defense. He's, he's got, excuse me, he's got the offense there with Krochikia, and he's talking about, hey, we got to get back and keep this football and get some first downs and just keep possession of the football. Well, the no thing mistakes. We, the thing we talked about, too, is that if they're close in the fourth quarter, will Pennsylvania begin to think about the trouble that they've had with Harvard over the last four years? The only team they've lost to in the last four seasons in the Ivy League. Moretz, this time Flynn underneath it at the 16. And knocked down at the 30. We'll see what kind of poise Krochicki has in the Pennsylvania offense, whether they try to score quickly and, and put the game out of reach or control it and just see what happens. Well, you know, you've been in this position. If you're going to be ahead 17-10, uh, the, uh, the, the other team is coming back again. Do you want a senior quarterback with Krochicki's experience? Well, and the other... But the other thing is, after an interception, every quarterback wants to get that next completion. So we'll see what, what kind of completion he goes after. Two tight ends. Long count, the pitch to Camizio off the middle. And he gets about three up to the 33-yard line. Dan Steer on the stop for the Crimson. The nose guard, Dan Steer. Coming through, making the hit. Camizio bounces off it, picks up three yards, second down and seven. The Dartmouth, uh, keep saying Dartmouth, who were there last week, <laughs> excuse right. me. The Harvard so defense has to there. plug in, that's right. Plug in here and get that ball back. There's still plenty of time. Jim Prochikia working from his own 33-yard line. The cut back to Flynn. He's got a block, but he's wrapped down from behind. He gets out to the 35-yard line. And you can see the momentum changing. Back in the ball game, number 99, Don Peterson, the sophomore who hurt his knee, is back in and trailing that play. He chased Flynn down from the backside, keeping to a one-yard gain. So fortunately for Harvard, that the injury to Peterson was not as serious as first thought. He's back in the game, makes a great play on Flynn. Now third down and six at the 35. Harvard showing blitz. Long count by Krochikia. Harvard backs out. Pressure, and he's got his tight end at the 40, but not a first down. And Krochikia took a terrific hit as he unloaded that football. Here we see it from the end zone as he makes the play fake looking to the wide receiver. You see the backside rush. He gets hit. He gets the ball off. The completion to Novoselsky. A fine job. Number 28. Glenn Philpot coming up on the corner to make the hit and saving him from a first down. And now it's fourth and one and they've forced the punt. Fosnott will punt it away. He gets pressure but gets it off. A fair catch by Eberle at the 30 and Harvard is in business. Trail by seven with seven and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And they're in the game. That's what they're hoping to do. 30 yard punt by Fosnott. Here we see Novoselsky running just an out pattern to get the first down. He catches the ball, and there comes Phil Pot, 28, and just catches him before he can get to the first down marker. He was looking to make the first down. He was a yard short. Big hit. Harvard's got the ball on their own 30-yard line. And that was probably his fault in cutting the pattern short. Sabara, no place. 
constantly try to remind receivers, when you need six yards, you go eight, so he can come back to the ball and still get that first down. Because he, he was open. He just ran the, the pattern too short. And here, the, the Penn defense has to take over. The pressure's on them. They've got Harvard on their own 29-yard line. They've got to get to the football and hold them and get the ball back for their offense. The Penn defense has done the job this year. Second down and 11. Yoey on the roll. Pumps. Throws deep for Sabaro and ball is out of bounds. Well covered by Brad Hines. Brad Hines did something that was very intelligent. He knew Sabaro was on his outside shoulder. There's a flag down on this play. Oh boy. And a big break for Harvard as indications. Penalty on Pennsylvania. It's going to be a personal First. foul against Pennsylvania. It probably was a late hit, perhaps, on the quarterback after he unloaded the ball. But 46, Brad Hines kept the receiver on his outside shoulder and, in, and forced him to go out of bounds. And once he goes out of bounds, he can't come back in to make the catch. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense, first down. And that always happens, usually on a high hit of the quarterback. The defenders like to keep their arms up so they get way of the ball or the, the arm going through the passing motion, but usually that arm against the helmet gets the flag. A quick handoff to Pusateri, and he's into Pennsylvania territory. Good call. Barely, excuse me, but barely got that handoff It was off. a counter. It was a little counter where he stepped to his right and handed back to Pusateri. He hasn't shown that play today because of the pursuing Penn defense. That's a good play to run. You get him moving with the, the step of the quarterback, and he hands the ball back. Like the offside guard pulling, not even blocking, almost like a sucker play. The, the defense is so aggressive, they will chase the guard on their reads. So we're looking at a second down and four at the 48. Bumble! And Harvard's got it. O'Neill falls on it at the 49. Again, a little counter trying to slip the ball to the fullback inside. Very fortunate to get the ball back and a force a third down and five. Plenty of time left here in the fourth period. 5.50 on the clock. The ball sitting just over the 50-yard line in Penn territory. A shot of the Penn bench. They're a little anxious now. They were in control, 17-0. Harvard's come back with 10 points here in the fourth period. Third down and five yards to go. Bob, are we in a four-down territory for Harvard? The option, and he gets about two. To answer that question, we're going to be in a four-down area <laughs> right, right now. I was just letting that play develop as he tried to run the option and keep the ball. Uh, with 5.20 on the clock, I wouldn't be a bit surprised that he'd go for it here. After all, he's 2-6, and six and he's got uh, nothing to lose. He's got to win this football game. Particularly looking at the stakes now, he's only got about, he's less than two yards to go. So Harvard will go for it at the Penn 47-yard line. If you're going to win games or come back in games like this where you're trailing and you've been down so far, you got to try plays. you got to pull off plays like this, and uh, I'm sure that's what's going through the mind of Joe Reston. Sabaro off tackle. He's got a block, and he's got a first down for Harvard inside the 45-yard line. He got a block on the left side. A good job of the left offensive side of the Harvard line, led by number 69, their left tackle, a sophomore, Maurice Frelo, who took him on the corner and gave him a chance to get that yardage. And again, you look at what's happening. Who are they coming back to? They're coming back to their senior ball carriers. Sobaro, Pusateri, the people who've been there before. And on the key situations, they seem to be running off tackle. The, uh, the old Green Bay sweep, turning it upfield. Sobaro in a short motion. Yoey, pressure, the short dump to O'Neill. And he's tripped up at the 41, a very short gain. Once again, Mike Smith. They tried to slip him the ball, a fullback coming out of the backfield in the flat, but Smith, the rover back, the sophomore, came up and made the hit. He's in a very fine prospect. Picked up only three yards, second and seven, but they've got the football in Penn territory. They're in the four down zone. It changes your play thinking too, when you've got the four downs as opposed to just the three. So now Yoey looks at a second down and seven. Short drop over any incomplete out of bounds. He had Sabaro short and Ed Boyle deep, but well covered by Pennsylvania. Good job in the secondary, particularly by the inside linebacker, uh, Rich Inskeep, who came out to cover Sabaro out of the backfield. He was supported behind him by Don Wilson. 
Cornell moving ahead, shutting out Columbia, looking towards next week for a showdown with Pennsylvania. Brown and Dartmouth having a very competitive game along with the Tigers and the Bulldogs. I'm afraid Yoey's going to get in trouble if he continues to lob the ball up. He's got to keep that short. We give the throw back. It pressured and sacked. Back to the 47-yard line. David Landau, quarterback, was going to be the quarterback throwback, but he had no time. Here we see it. That's Landau who slipped into the game to throw this pass. He's being pursued by Sebastianelli and McConnell, and they throw him for the loss as the Penn defense again comes back with a big play, and Harvard is now fourth and 21, and the ball's back on their own 45-yard line. A lot of times the quarterback on that play can get lost on the sideline. They went into the sideline, but it's tough for a right-hander to turn around and throw back left. Harvard with the four receivers to the wide side. Yoey on the roll. He's got time. He lets it go. A lot of bodies back there, and incomplete out of bounds. Let's go, Very exciting moment here. A lot of pressure on the Penn defense, and the secondary came with four receivers that time. Phillips and Sobaro ran deep, but the secondary, led by the senior, the rover, Captain Brad Hines, met the taste. Here we see the throw up the field, and he puts that ball, but it's out of bounds. It's almost like a Big Ben hoping you get a tip, but you'd think that Harvard would spread the field out to get it as use as much as the field as possible, but they had four defenders and four receivers and the ball was even out of bounds so there was no chance for a completion so Penn takes over 248 ahead by seven Clark up the middle down to the 41 Keep running. hold on to the ball Mello. no mistakes oh Come on, Mello. goes out ahead of Princeton 14 to 13 In low the score quarter. and they're all kicking field goals up there I mean, it's amazing no mistakes, and there's the clock. That's the most important item right now. Penn wants to make first downs. They want to keep the ball on the ground. They want to walk away with this score and go to Ithaca next week to meet Cornell head to head for the championship. Penn showing their medal, being tested. Holding when it counted. Comizio high steps it down to the 37 yard line. Jim Bell on the stop for the Crimson. The Crimson defense today has done a good job. They've hung in there tough. They've played this way all season. It's their offense that really hasn't been able to get the momentum for them, but the defense has played well, and they've kept themselves in a lot of ball games. At least they've kept themselves in this one today. Third down and a long one yard for Pennsylvania going to the unbalanced line, and Krochikia calls timeout. And that timeout was called from the sideline. You could hear Ed Zubero saying, Jim, timeout. He did not want that play call. So they didn't want to make a mistake. 135 on the clock, third down and one. They called it timeout. Next week, the game, Harvard and Yale in Cambridge, Massachusetts, the 103rd plane. In addition, we're going to have updated coverage from Ithaca on the Penn Cornell Ivy League showdown. Third down conversions. Penn looking at a third one right now. Pennsylvania's three for 11 on third down conversions. Harvard five of 13. Three for 11. Harvard defense has been there. Timeouts remaining even. More than likely, Penn will not use anymore. Harvard has to start using it and start playing with the clock themselves. More than likely, we'll see number 27, who's in a tailback on this play, carry the ball. Chris Flynn, two tight ends. Long count, pitch to Flynn, cuts it back, and he dives over the 35-yard line, enough for a first down. Clifton Tidwell makes the stop for Harvard. Not that, before Flynn picks up a first down. I'm, I'm really amazed. We've watched this, this youngster all year at 5'9". They listed him 180. He's probably more like 170. To see that second effort, not only the quickness, the speed, but the strength that he has, and that's all it was. He just broke out of Tidwell's tackle for enough for the first down. Yeah. 
Okia on the pitch to Camizio this time. Off tackle. Cuts back and out down to the 28-yard line. A pickup of about eight as Harvard uses one of their two remaining timeouts with 57 seconds left to go in the game. Another injury on the field. Another Harvard player is down. Camizio, 23 carries, 133 yards, and two touchdowns. Another outstanding afternoon for the senior. And, that, and how they use their halfbacks. Flynn has carried the ball 10 times for 59 yards. And surprisingly, they slipped the ball of their fullbacks today more often than usual. They've given the ball to Tommy Clark nine times for 35 yards. They spread it all, but today it's really been Camizio. He's been the big factor in the running game. And it's out, output for this afternoon, the highest all season for Rich Camizio. We'll be right back following this message from our underwriters. The Ivy League football game of the week is made possible by grants from the financial professionals at Payne Weber. And by Chrysler, makers of Plymouth Voyager, where the pride is back. Back at Franklin Field, 57 seconds left to go in the game. We'd like to thank our underwriters for great coverage all season. Ivy League football, GTE, financial professionals at Payne Weber and Chrysler. And uh, we've had a lot of exciting action this, uh, this season. So and there Dan goes Peterson. the injured player. That's uh, number 99. Don Peterson, once again. Yeah, he's, he's been in and out, but he's been when he's been in, he's been a factor. But he's being helped off the field again. And an injury to his right leg. Didn't want to short change Chrysler Plymouth and also include the Plymouth side of it. So uh, we really appreciate the, their help in bringing Ivy League football to people around the country. Penn is looking at a second down and two at the Harvard 27-yard line. Camizio bowls his way, but only picks up about one as Harvard will use their last timeout. So 50 seconds to go. Pennsylvania in good position to remain undefeated, leading 17 to 10. And they will take this undefeated uh, standard standing as well as their undefeated standing in the Ivy League to Ithaca next week to meet Cornell for an undefeated season and also another Ivy League championship. It'll be a great game. See, it's been a while before <laughs> since uh, Penn's beaten Harvard three times in a decade. As I mentioned, prior to 82, in fact, since Ivy League was formalized in 56, Harvard has a 23-6-1 advantage and prior to 82 they had won nine straight 15 out of 16 but in the last five years Pennsylvania's resurgent going for their fifth in a row Ivy title only duplicated by Dartmouth that's right and only one team stands in their way and it'll be next week in Ithaca when they meet Cornell and we'll be in Cambridge with Harvard and Yale but we'll bring highlights of that game to you throughout the afternoon the Penn Cornell game from Ithaca New York Third down and one at the Harvard 25-yard line. Prochicki with a long count gives to Clara the cutback. He's got a first down and more. Down to the 15-yard line. And that should do it. Harvard's out of timeouts. There's 45 seconds left on the clock as it ticks down. Pennsylvania in command 17 to 10. This will be the last play they'll have to run as we get down under 30 seconds. The give up the middle to the fullback. And Clark on the carry, and that should do it. Pennsylvania remains unbeaten. 9-0 for the season with a 17-10 victory over Harvard here this afternoon at Franklin Field as winning coach Ed Zubro the only coach in the country with a career mark undefeated. Yeah. 
Final score, Pennsylvania 17, Harvard 10. There's a very happy parents weekend crowd here as Ed Zubro and Joe Ristick get together. And maybe next week, the highlights, we'll see a smile on a coach Ed Zubro. There he is with his defensive coordinator, Gary Steele. And that customary event after an Ivy League game, the players lining up and going through the line congratulating each other. Quite a and, sight. And I think uh, Pens Pennsylvania has a lot of respect for that Harvard team. They didn't quit when they got down 17 to nothing. Well, we've talked about his injuries. We don't want to make excuses about that, but it, is, has, it has disrupted his team, particularly his offense. They played tough. They got one game left and will be there next week. And it'll be a big one. Big Parents Day crowd. It was a big afternoon for Penn football. It's been a great season for Penn football. And they've got a lot to be proud of. They've really got the class program in this Ivy League. And until somebody can beat them, it looks like they're headed for another championship. Last time, perfect season, 1904. So it's been a while. A long while. A final score once again. Pennsylvania 17, Harvard 10. I'm Brian Dowling for Bob Cassiola saying so long from Franklin Field in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The executive producer of the Ivy League Game of the Week is Barry Frank, produced by Chris Carmody, directed by Bob Lanning, technical director Tom Clark, Don't forget to join us next Saturday for the 103rd playing of the game, the Harvard Crimson and the Yale Bulldogs from Harvard Stadium in Cambridge, Massachusetts.